on the schedule for today is fixing all the mistakes I made on the RM250 throughout the build, as well as bolting on some new parts. And since it is December, we have a new deal of the month through Prime. And before we get started, I wanna give you guys a quick reminder that this beauty will be given away when it's all finished up. If you would like to sign up, just hit the link down below in the description box. So one thing that's really bugging me about this bike is the engine covers here. They are magnesium and I did everything I could to possibly seal that in because magnesium corrodes just in a matter of hours, but it was to no avail. I did a Cerakote clear coat on this cover here and you can see some of the corrosion starting to come through. It's no fault of Cerakote. I did that same coating on the engine case, cases, which are aluminum and they're holding up great. It's just that magnesium corrodes so badly. You can see the difference between the aluminum and the magnesium. The magnesium has that kind of darker look to it. And that is that corrosion or that oxidization coming out. So I actually really like the look of the brush covers. That's what I was going for, but I'm gonna have to do a solid color on these covers in order to kind of hide the oxidization. So it's the same deal on the clutch cover as well all this black dots coming through, that is that oxidization. So what I'm gonna do is pull the covers off, blast them and get them ready for coatings. Let's take a peek in the engine and see how she's holding up. So usually magnesium covers have a stamping that says magnesium, either on the inside or sometimes on the outside, it'll say. In a matter of months or years, the whole cover would have started to look like that. All right, into the cabinet we go. We're gonna be prepping these with 100 grit aluminum oxide since we'll be doing Cerakote on them. Sucks to see that brushed look go to waste. I spent so much time on those. Now we're just gonna fall through with the standard Cerakote prep on these. Wow, that changes the look of the engine completely. Personally, I like the look of the brush better, but it wouldn't have held up long-term, so we had to do something there. But I had an idea here. I'm sure you guys have noticed this, but anything you put on an engine cover will wear through from boots, from riding, and it just, over time, it looks like garbage. Anything you put on an engine cover, such as powder coat, Cerakote, um, anodizing even where it's through. The only thing that I've seen hold up long-term is hard anodizing, but you can't do that on magnesium covers. And so I was thinking, you know how they put grip tape on frames and that protects the paint or the powder on frames? Why not do the same thing on an engine cover, but maybe not that textured look. Maybe the texture would look good, but let's head up to the printer and I'll uh, put something together, see if it works. So this is what we came up with. Did a RM250 with a little Prime logo here on some uh, really sticky vinyl as well as a flat laminate. See how they line up. I think they'll look really good with the already kind of like semi-gloss covers here. Gonna wanna clean it up with some isopropyl. We're gonna peel half of the backing away. This helps us Line it up a little bit better. The shifter's in the way, I'm gonna have to pull that off. Looks like we're pretty good. I'm just gonna start tacking it down. Now this vinyl does have like an air release technology so it doesn't bubble up as much. Peel off the bottom half. Now for the rest of this, we'll need a heat gun. A 
Oh yeah, I think that'll, that'll hold up really well. Oh, that's sweet. Now this one's a little trickier because it is just completely round. There's nothing to line up. And something like this that needs to stick really well, you don't want to use anything like Windex or soapy water to install it. You just want to install it dry. It just takes a little bit of heat for each one of these little creases to come out. There we have it. It's going to give it some more heat to let it really stick to the cover. That is looking badass on there. Looks like a brand new cover. I wanted to print up a cover that looked like frame grip tape. I want to slap this one on and uh, see how it looks on here. See which one I'm going to go with. It's always easier to peel off graphics when they're warm. Brings all the adhesive with it. Yeah, that's on there pretty good. Takes a decent amount of force to yank that off. And this is a Cerakoted cover, which typically has like a non-stick property to it. And these things stick awesome. And as you can see, it's not peeling off the Cerakote either. So that's good. Keeps it fresh underneath. If you're putting these on in the cold, you want to heat up the guard before as well as the cover. I like that one too. It's pretty aggressive looking. Dude, this one looks like a wrinkled powder coat finish. I don't know which, which one do you guys like? So I did a bunch of testing with these two guards. I put them on a different bike and just kicked the crap out of them with a boot on, scraped them up, and it seemed like the texture one held up a little bit better because it is actually a thicker laminate. Obviously you can see the smooth finish would show uh, more scrapes and wear and tear. I guess in my opinion, I think the smoother one looks better, but this one will hold up better long-term. So I decided to print a texture one for a flywheel cover too. This is off another bike. But one thing I realized is the smoother one seems to show this corrosion a little bit more. You can see like the wear and tear kind of shines through the, the smoother one while the texture one hides all of that. So if you have a really worn cover that has scrapes and uh, pits in it, it may be better to use a texture one. And also I wanted to see how the texture one looks over the Suzuki lettering here. So you can see the texture one kind of hides that Suzuki raised text on there, whereas the smooth one, once you heat it up, it'll show the Suzuki through it. So if that's the look you're going for, then that would be the best option for the smooth one. So originally I was just gonna print these engine cover guards for myself, just for this bike to try out, but it seems like they hold up really good. So I printed a few extras for you guys in case you want them. I have them for the RM250, and then I made some for Honda CR125s and 250s since I have those bikes here as well and I was able to get a perfect fit on those two. So while I was printing the engine covers, I thought I would just whip up some frame guards as well. I did two different styles here, plain black with the logo, or we have kind of a honeycomb hex shape. That one looks cool. That's almost a little too much for this bike though. I kind of like the more plain style better. So let's, let's slap that one on. This is the same material as I used on the engine guards and probably start at the bottom here that's where we need to line up so when you're putting these frame guards on you want to stay away from the edges anything that could catch an edge that's what's gonna peel this up it does stick really well but to make it last as long as possible you want to have it just away from the edges and as you're working it on, just make sure you keep some of the backing on there. That way you're not touching the adhesive. Stretch is pretty good too if you need to kind of move it around. It'll, it'll flex. I just need to reposition that. There we go. Fits like a glove. 
and it's gonna stick a lot better with some heat, especially when it's cold outside. This side is definitely gonna need some heat because it's gotta conform around the weld and then down here at the bottom. It'll help this kinda tack it into those tighter areas. Digging that look, I don't know if I want texture on both. I'll probably do uh, the smooth engine cover with the textured frame guard, but oh, that's, a, that's a meaty look. So full disclosure, these guards will wear through eventually. They're not gonna last forever, but the whole purpose of them is to protect the paint or the Cerakote, and it's gonna be a lot easier to replace one of these guards and a lot cheaper than pulling your whole bike apart to repowder coat your frame or even recoating your engine cover. Uh, the 15 or $20 for these uh, guards is definitely saves you some hassle, but keep in mind, they are gonna wear through. How long they last depends on how much you're riding and your boots and how much you grip the frame and engine cover. So there's really no uh, timeline. After some consideration, I decided to hold off on offering those guards through the website. I really wanna put them to the full test on the track and really put some abuse to them before I sell them. And I really don't want to offer them if they're not the best they can possibly be. I've tested them here in the shop and they've held up really well, but it's pretty hard to actually ride the bike in the shop or in four feet of snow like we have right now. Maybe that's a good reason to go get a snow bike kit. But I do have the pages on the website for these guards. If you want to check them out, you can actually pre-order them through there. And by the time they're available, maybe that'll be springtime, um, they'll be absolutely perfected and you guys won't be disappointed. But uh, I'm just gonna have to hold off for now. So I slapped one of the hex ones on here just to see how it looks. Not bad at all. But now that I'm all done with the engine covers and frame guards, I've gotta move on to the next issue I'm having with this bike and that is the rear tire. Somehow I popped the tube when I put this tire on. So let's go ahead and fix that. Usually I just pull the whole tire off to do this, but I just decided to pull one side, there we go, there's the valve stem. Pull one side of the tire off and just yank the tube out. That's a big thick tube, I don't know how I popped it. I'm gonna have to see. I probably nicked it somewhere. A little soapy water will help us identify the leak. What? No leaks. So I sprayed her down with soapy water and I'm not seeing a leak anywhere. You know what I'm betting what happened is just as the temperature got colder, I mean it's 50 degrees in here and I when I put this on it was 80 in the shop. So probably just uh, went dropped a few PSI and pressure and it looked like it was flat. Uh, I don't know, maybe I should trust myself a little bit more. I was pretty sure I was being an idiot and I popped this thing, which it's probably been 10 years since I popped a tube. If you think your tire's flat, maybe just check the pressure. Maybe it's just winter time and your, your tire needs a little air. Good thing Rocky Mountain always sends me extra tubes. They must know I suck at putting on tires. I don't know how you would even pop one of these. This is like the thickest tube of all time. Dude, you know what's crazy? I've had baby powder. I've never once used baby powder on my own kid. Baby powder is a fucking scam. It's way better for tires. I bet you it's full of chemicals, dude. It smells yeah. Oh. I can see this being a freaking pain in the butt getting this through. This tube's so thick. wonders how I get my hands in such tight and deep places. 
Come on now. What we have here is some premium tire paste, also known as coconut oil. I figured I'd give this a try. I uh, use it for many different uses. It's good stuff. I figured I'd put it on my tires as well. It's just a little cold out here. It's about that cold, so it's gonna be kind of pasty right now. From what I've heard, the coconut oil helps keep the friction down. Oh, just wipe it in your pocket. <laughs> oh, I'm just sa God. saving it for later. You <laughs> never know, you might need some coconut oil. <laughs> If you want to get real juicy, use a heat gun. This is gonna just butter on there. Ow! Nature is pretty neat. See that coconut oil? She freaking just slipped right on. There we have it folks, changed the tube for no reason. She's still holding just fine. I guess I got a spare tube now. So moving on, we have a deal of the month this month through Prime and that is hoodies. We've got this one here, make two strokes great again and then also another one upstairs. And while we're up there, we are gonna pick the winner for the Fathead giveaway that we did on Black Friday. So let's figure out who the lucky winner is of one of these beautiful heads. We also have these red hoodies. So if you want to snag these on the store, we've got sizes, I want to say small through extra, extra large. They are free with any order over $100. So just head over to the store and you can find out about those. And while we're at it, let's pick the winner here. Got a random name picker pulled up and all the names are punched in. Those guys that entered the Fathead Racing giveaway Let's figure out who the winner is. Kaili Soon, you are gonna be getting an email and you are gonna be able to pick out a fathead racing cylinder head of your choice. So congrats, Kaili. And for all of you that are interested in picking up one of these heads, basically what they are is a billet aluminum cylinder head with interchangeable domes. They look awesome, they function great. So if you want to check those out, I do have a discount code on those. Use CAM10. 10% off your fat head. A few more parts to bolt on here. First thing is a custom brake clevis. We actually have Honda brakes on this bike, Honda front brakes, and a Honda rear master cylinder. And to convert that so it lines up with the pedal, we made up this custom CNC clevis, as well as the clevis pin. So usually these are just a straight pin without the threads that go through, but we thought, well, let's uh, make it like a brake pedal uh, pivot bolt. And it actually turned out pretty good. I'll show you how this works. Basically the same thing as a stock clevis, just threads right onto the master cylinder. You can see this one needed a different offset as well as little angle back in order to line up with that brake pedal. We'll set it right there and see how that lines up. We want the pedal pretty much level with the foot peg. And just like a brake pedal pivot bolt, you wanna have some grease on the pin as well. There we go. Oh, that's a precise fitment. Flushes out really nicely on there. Tighten up the lock nut and we are good to go. Yeah, that turned out sick, man. I wish I could take the credit for it, but Nick pretty much did all the design on this clevis, so good work, man. So originally I just made these clevises only for this bike, but like everything else, I like to offer it to you guys too, but it is a pretty limited range that these fit. It's only 2001 to 2003 RM250 and RM125. So these are also available on the store if you guys wanna convert your 
Suzuki to a Honda rear master cylinder. So in order for the Honda master cylinder to mount up on the Suzuki frame, you gotta do just a little bit of trimming here, a little filing on the corner of the frame, and it'll fit up perfectly. The bolt holes line up just spot on. Something else I made a mistake on was these forks, and I wanna fix that right now too. So if you come in real close, you can see there's a little line where the anodizing is missing on the forks. Basically what happened there was when I stripped the fork tubes, I didn't get the old anodizing off right there. And so it didn't really have a clean line going to the cap. So I thought I'm gonna print up some decals to cover that up. And this is what I came up with. I'm just gonna wrap around the fork tube. Got an extra sticker here. I'm just trying to figure out where to put it. Looking around on here. I don't really want stickers all over the bike, so I kind of want it in an inconspicuous area. But I was thinking, I've never seen anyone do this before, but sticker on the lower fork tube would just be so mad. People, dude, this is gonna set some serious trends. Found a wiring harness, you guys might remember. The other one was all mashed up. Found a good used one at eBay. This one's actually super clean. So let's get this wiring tidied up. So on this bike, the CDI goes in the air box. So I'm gonna have to route the harness from the air box forward. Wait, now is that supposed to work? <laughs> is there not another plug around here? So after some digging, I found out this is actually a 2002 engine in a 2001 frame. And that is why the wiring is not really lining up. If you look at this engine here, here's a 2001 engine. You can see the stator wires coming off the stator. There's two plugs versus this one only has one which the white one goes to the rectifier. So what I decided to do, I'm gonna convert all this over to 2002 wiring. I'm gonna have to trade out the CDI box, the wiring harness, I'm gonna get rid of the rectifier. And then there's also this solenoid for the power valve. I'm gonna dump that as well since the 2002 doesn't need it. So this will actually work out better. I have less components to work with and just kind of simplified things. And if you think about it, if Suzuki decided to get rid of the rectifier and this solenoid in 2002, then it was probably a change for the better. So I am just gonna do that. So I'm gonna pull this 01 harness off the bike. And now I'm gonna be on the lookout for another harness, but this time I need a 2002 harness. So if any of you have a, I believe it's 2002 only, maybe newer years will fit, but let me know if you have a good harness. So I won't need the rectifier any longer. And get rid of this. And unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to leave this wiring the way it is until I get a new harness. I guess the next thing I could do here is put some hoses, vent hoses off the exhaust valve. So I was editing the last video I posted, I noticed I didn't separate the two leads on the kill switch wire when I crimped them together. So I need to fix that or else the bike ain't gonna run. So I'm just gonna slide some heat shrink over each one of these connectors. And while we're on the subject of mistakes, here's my perspective on it. No matter what you're doing in life, whether you are building a business, building a bike, building a family, mistakes are gonna happen. You can't be afraid to make mistakes. You can't dwell on them. You just gotta learn from them. And if you learn from your mistakes, that is just called growth, in my opinion. 
So I like to share all my mistakes with you guys. I like to show that I am just like all of you. I screw up, I learn the hard way a lot of times. And if you're a person that likes to say that they don't make mistakes, you're either lying or you are not trying at all in life. Mistakes are a good thing. If you can screw up, you're probably learning a lot and you're gonna get a lot further ahead in life. So I try not to be some of these other social media people that just show all the positive, all the perfect things that I do. No, I'm gonna show all the things I screw up with as well in hopes that it can help you guys. And maybe some of you will learn from my mistakes too. So I was missing the little rubber boot that connects the pipe and silencer. Let's get that on. Swap out these standard looking washers for some drilled ones. So you guys might remember I was looking for a CDI box mount. I found one, but I had to buy the whole dang air box with it. So I'm gonna pop this one off here. This thing is crusty as heck. There's no way I can bolt on the bike like that. So let's blast it and lay down some Cerakote on it. Let's go ahead and get this CDI box riveted in place. That is all dialed in now. Love the black on black. Last thing we gotta do today is work on this skid plate. I found a good used one on eBay. So let's go buff this one out. There's a few scratches and pits here. Let's knock those down with a little more aggressive wheel. Could have spent a little more time and gotten some of those pits out, but gotta keep in mind this is a skid plate and it's gonna get scratched just sitting on the stand. So I'm gonna take a hand pad to this, get a little more consistent look out of it, and then bolt it up. Definitely want to use some Loctite on these screws. The vibration through the frame can make them come loose pretty quickly. Now the one downside to metal skid plates is sometimes they can add to the vibration of a bike. So you want to make 100% certain the skid plate is nice and tight and it's not rattling around. While the bike's off the stand, I've got one more thing on my list to knock out for the day, and that is fork alignment. Aligning the forks is basically making sure the right fork is parallel with the left fork, and if you get the forks perfectly aligned, that equates for a lot less wear and tear on your bushings, seals, brakes, bearings. Everything on the front end just works a lot better. So you want to have the brake side tightened up, the pinch bolts and the axle, basically just torque the axle nut first, then the pinch bolts. If the axle spins, you can tighten those and then leave this side loose. The fork needs to be able to slide on the axle like that in order for it to be aligned. If it is not moving, you probably have some burrs on the axle or you might just have to open up the gap here. And just to show you guys how much the fork will move when we align it, I'm gonna bring the fork all the way out. Now there's a few different methods you can use for aligning the forks. The way I go about it is having the bike on the ground. I'll compress the forks and that will align the forks on the axle here. You can also put the bike on a stand, spin up the wheel, jam the brakes and that works too. I just think the more reliable method is to actually compress the forks. Just jam the brakes, push down the forks a few times. You can even get on the bike. 
Let's get a close up of how the fork slides on the axle when you compress the forks. And once the forks are aligned, just tighten down these pinch bolts with a torque wrench. It's usually around 12 or 13 foot pounds for these. That is gonna be a wrap for this video. I'm feeling a lot better now that I got these little quirks ironed out on the RM and it should be pretty free sailing from here on out. We're getting really close on this bike. Just have that wiring harness, radiators and plastics left, which we have some really cool stuff coming for that. So hang in there guys. And as far as the next few weeks go, I'm gonna take a little time off from this build and work on the shop. As you can see, it's been under construction for the last year and I wanna tidy that up over winter break. I'm tired of the background of the videos looking like plywood and insulation. So that is my plan for the next few weeks, but I will see you after the New Year's. Hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and an awesome New Year's and to get a little time off to kind of refresh and come to the New Year with a full head of steam and ready to kick some ass. I'll be right there with you guys. I am super excited for the coming year and the coming years ahead and I am uh, wanting to go full throttle. So I will see you guys there. Have a good one and thanks for always supporting the channel.